All right, everyone, how are we doing? Send it here from Send It's Weather Channel. And today we're going to take a look at the latest from the model runs. Um, we're going to take a look at the stratospheric data. Um, I showed some of this yesterday. Because there is still a potential there for a major sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, we'll have a look at all the latest data from the 12Z suite of models from all of your main GFS, GEM, ECMWF runs for the next couple of weeks, which should take us into the second week of March. But I'll mix up that intro a bit and say all right, because, you know, people from around where I am say all right. So let's see how many all rights we can get in the comments this time. Not send it, so we're nice to read them all, though. But anyway, so we're going to start then by looking at initial conditions from the 3rd of March. Um, and just in case anyone new's watching... All these um, strengthening heights or um, warming heights are towards Siberia. And these blues are the polar vortex, which you've probably heard about before, at its roots. And as you can see, the cold temperatures are centred over uh, Western Europe, but they are way above um, way, way above us. So at the moment, um, 10 days away, it's displaced. At the 5th of March, you can see it's displaced uh, from its initial position its initial position which is over the uh, north pole and it's been displaced because it's been put under pressure by this warming this warming intensifies and as you can see the pv or the polar vortex at its roots is being stretched towards the into the first second week of, of march because it stretches its roots but doesn't quite sustain long enough to split it which means that we we'd see it probably a sudden stress rate warming for a time but you need a proper split so basically this this um, polar vortex needs to split into two lobes where one goes into Alaska and Canada and the other goes, you know, into Eastern Europe, but way above in the atmosphere. So not like an actual weather pattern. That's not high pressure. That's not low pressure. That's um, that's a troposphere. troposphere. That's the weather we experience at the ground. This is way up in the atmosphere. It takes two weeks, a lag time of two weeks for the stratosphere to respond to the troposphere or the troposphere to respond to the stratosphere, I should say, um, which is where we see an impact at ground level um or in, in the atmosphere we should say which could in, in, in um, influence our weather patterns however with this uh, we're just seeing a minor warming and a displacement not a proper split meaning that um yeah it's it's, it's um, not proper it's not a proper split so won't have too much of an impact if you, you need a proper split to see um sustained impacts you can see it regathers itself and um, sustains the cold pool of temperatures over europe We'll move on to the main charts then, enough waffle. Um, we're going to have a look at the GFS 12Z, this is the latest run uh, from the GFS. So as you can see, current conditions, we have high pressure centred to our south and east. Low pressures in the Atlantic um, towards Iceland, bringing the wind from a mild southwesterly wind. Now into next week, we do allow cooler, fresher air masses to move in from off the Atlantic, but nothing particularly cold. A few frost areas of frost and fog through Wednesday to Thursday. Mostly not too bad, you know, feeling a little bit chilly in those westerly, northwesterly winds, but overall not too bad and probably quite dry. Obviously most unsettled in the north, um, with this little area of low pressure on Wednesday, but doesn't look too bad. Then high pressure uh, ridges in off the Atlantic for a time before we return to unsettled, more unsettled conditions. Then we build then we build another ridge of high pressure before that is quickly toppled by the Atlantic, bringing in another westerly flow which may even bring a little bit of winteriness to um, north, northern hills and mountains um, as we move it to the day 10 mark uh, we see the winds return to a very mild southerly southwesterly with the uh, gfs with a 10 degree ice firm moving into the country which is very mild temperatures then then we go more westerly and atlantic driven so very unsettled especially in the north but very unsettled compared to the six said um it's the earlier run the six hours earlier run you can see that they're actually pulling in some really cold air. So a massive contrast between one run to the next, highlighting the uncertainty at this range. We have a look at the GM next. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. I do really appreciate all of your support. Join the Send It gang, the Send It's Weather gang. <laughs> We're very slow, actually, on Wednesday to Thursday. The GM has it slightly further southwards, so central England would see the worst of the rain there. Then that high pressure builds, but more strongly to our north and east, meaning it could be a little bit chilly um, over the next weekend uh, with frost and fog in places. High pressure kind of sits around the country as well. So, you know, it's kind of average temperatures, even though the upper air temperatures are average. Could I mean, above average. Could be quite cold at the surface uh, with some inversions, some frost and fog. But again, further on we get into early part of March, um, second half of March, um, these inversion patterns tend to not really occur because everything's getting stronger. Just seeing the ECM as well, 
Again, very similar with that low pressure clearing through on Wednesday to Thursday. Then high pressure tries to build in, does successfully, and we remain under high pressure. Pretty settled, coolest in the north with, with colder incursions at times, but most of the country is pretty mild and dry there. If we have a look at the upper air temperature profile, this is for Birmingham. Um, just picked it up. You can just see that it's highlighted quite well. You know, below average for the next week with those oscillations between milder and cooler. Probably ends up milder than average. Then we see some bigger um, upwards ticks um, between the 3rd and the 5th of March. 3rd and the 7th, I should say, of March. Uh, with temperatures remaining way above average. Um, if I dip towards average towards uh, mid-month, or well, second half of second week of March, Snow Row is looking pretty pitiful if you want your snow. Um, there's about five runs there, so I wouldn't, um, wouldn't get your hopes up for that. It does look pretty boring in that respect, if you like your snow. Um, but yeah, in, in the longer term, again, there are some colder runs, but quite a few colder runs, but a lot of scatter. Some are mild runs, some cold runs, averaging out to around average. It's a long way off. It's um, uncertain. The period to look for for coldies would be the second week into the third week of March, I would say, if this SSW and all the other um, climate things come together climate anomalies come together at the right time now i was trying to show you the cfs uh, this is the um this is the spring anomaly um so with the gray highlights the uncertainty but as you can see what we can kind of indicate is that we have high pressure which is probably the azores high out to the west um and with this pattern the UK is kind of in a westerly, a northwesterly pattern, quite Atlantic driven. You'd expect this white area to be low pressure, um, which is up towards Greenland and Iceland and Scandinavia. We're probably beginning the wind from the west, so a pretty wet spring favoured. Uh, little mini forecast, not gonna, not gonna do it because the gaps already done it. Quite similar to it actually with my prediction, but I'm a bit of a wuss to um to put it out. But um, in my opinion, I think that we're gonna see uh, March come out above average. April below average and May around average. That's my prediction with um between middle of March and end of April, well middle of March and the first second week into the first second week of April to be quite cold but quite dry as well. Um May I'm a bit uncertain uncertain on unsure on. I'd say May is going to be about average for say average rainfall with wetter periods and drier periods mixed in and the wet periods could be quite stormy. But anyway, that's for another video. If you want to see that, leave a like and um, and we'll do it. I'll do it. Right. <laughs> Thank you all very much for tuning in to today's video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.